Okay, people, I'm going to try to make this video a real quick one. If you don't care about mission making and Zeusing for Arma 3, you can turn it off right now because that's what it's going to be about. Still here? Alright, here's some ideas to help give your players a better experience. This is not going to be a basic Eden Editor slash Zeus interface guide. I'm going to assume you already know the basics. These are just some things I've learned over the years that I haven't seen anyone else talk about. First off, I'm going to give you a tip to improve close quarters combat. One of my biggest pet peeves with this game is enemies sticking their guns or body parts straight through walls. Not only is this an immersion breaker, it's also very unfair. Often it allows you to shoot enemies without them fighting back or vice versa. Luckily, this problem isn't very hard to solve. Here's what I do to fix it. After placing units down, I spin them around 360 degrees. If their gun sticks through a wall or furniture at any point, I readjust their placement until this is no longer the case. I repeat this process for all three stances until the placement is perfect. Then I make sure the AI's path ability is disabled. Some people might say that disabling AI pathfinding is dumb, and that enemies might as well be turrets at that point. But I disagree. Many modded structures don't have building positions for the AI to move to at all, or they have issues with AI walking straight through walls or falling to their deaths. Disabling AI pathing is the only way to make these structures usable, and as long as you have a Zeus to remote control units when necessary, what's the problem? Anyways, an easier way of preventing AI from sticking their guns through walls is to give them weapons with shorter barrel lengths. An AKS-74U is a lot less likely to stick through a wall than a full-length AK. Here's a little tip. Disabling an AI's ability to take cover significantly decreases their performance impact on the game, and can be great for making an assault squad that exists only to run into players like idiots and get killed. Whenever possible, AI units should be grouped together. Not only will this make them smarter because they'll share information with each other, it also helps performance. Many AI decisions are done on a per group rather than per individual basis, so two groups of five units each will run a little worse than one group with ten units. When placing furniture, be careful. Not just because of the potential performance impact of these extra decorations, although that should always be a consideration, but also because furniture can be left floating in midair when the building it's in gets destroyed. If you're going to furnish a building and use it as an enemy HQ or hardpoint, it would be smart to only add decorations to the bottom floor to avoid this, or you can make the building immune to damage. However, indestructible buildings also have unbreakable windows, so this method is best saved for buildings that lack glass windows. Note that some furniture pieces actually do have physics properties and therefore won't get stuck in midair, but they still shouldn't be used frequently due to performance considerations. And that's something to always be cognizant of, performance. Remember, more objects equals more lag. More units equals more lag. More vehicles especially equals more lag. If you want to place vehicles for decorative purposes, place static wrecks instead of actual vehicles. And when choosing locations to place your objectives, avoid putting down tons of units in dense urban areas that are already laggy. Of course, if your mission calls for urban combat, you may have no choice. Just understand that Arma 3 is one of the most poorly optimized games ever made. You simply have to live with that fact and try to mitigate it as much as possible. If you want to simulate a distant battle, never place any real units down. Instead, put down a few smoke pillars and use the tracers module to craft the illusion of a raging gun battle. This will save you a lot of time and improve performance too. Here's something to keep in mind. KISS. No, not those guys. It's an acronym for Keep It Simple Stupid. This phrase should always be in the back of your head while making stuff for Arma 3. If you're thinking about making a mission with an intricate, detailed backstory, you've got to think. Is anyone actually going to pay attention to this shit, or is it just a waste of time? Remember, it's called a briefing for a reason. It should be brief and to the point. Of course, your players need some justification and background information on what's going to happen in the mission, but that should be kept to a minimum, it should be easy to understand, and most importantly, it should be repeated. A lot of players use the briefing as an opportunity to go AFK and swipe right on fat chicks on Tinder, so you'll want to reiterate the important details multiple times just in case someone's not listening to the whole thing. You should also have this mentality when designing missions as well. Don't make them too complicated and never rely on your players finding hidden items to progress the mission. People are not as perceptive as you think they are, and you don't want them to get stuck or frustrated. Locating hidden intelligence or weapons caches is best left as a bonus side objective, not the main objective of any mission. 
Even when developing a mod list, you should keep KISS in mind. Every additional mod you add to the list means longer loading times, lower frame rates, and less disk space for your player base. You should only use mods that are absolutely essential. When you're remote controlling enemies to shoot at players, don't ruthlessly slaughter them. Deliberately miss your first few shots, and only shoot to kill if they're stupid enough to not duck for cover. This rule is especially important if you're making a mission with limited respawns or a very long reinsertion time. Nobody wants to get killed and spend 5 minutes getting back into the fight only to get immediately killed again by a Zeus going on a rampage. Also, never give the enemy assets that players have no means of defeating or avoiding. If your players don't have mine detectors, don't place any minefields. If they don't have anti-tank weapons, don't make them fight tanks. Never try to make a mission that relies on players getting overwhelmed and retreating. Unless you're doing a mission with no respawns, the consequences for dying are so mild that players will fight to the last man before giving up any ground. When making an objective, a good idea is to put yourself in the headspace of the enemy commander. Ask yourself where the most likely attack routes are, and place defenses accordingly. For example, in the town of Lolis, an attack from this direction would be easiest to repel since there's very little cover and anybody standing on this hill will have to skyline themselves, becoming an easy target. On the other hand, an amphibious assault force using these rocks as cover could easily move right into town without exposing themselves to any gunfire. That's very dangerous, so I've placed some anti-personnel mines all over the rocks to preclude that possibility. The two roads leading into town are another potential attack vector, so I've got the main road covered with a 50 cal, which has sandbags for cover and is partially concealed by bushes. The side road is covered by a grenade launcher team and a sniper hidden on these rocks, who is in a great position to engage targets from any direction. I've set up squads in these blue and yellow houses in town. Inside the blue house, I've placed a machine gunner and his assistant. Note the machine gunner is placed in a position where he can shoot out of two different windows depending on the circumstances. He can support the technical parked outside if he needs to. On the stairwell, I've placed a guy with a ballistic shield who will be a tough nut to crack if the player base hasn't brought grenades. At the yellow house, I've placed a machine gunner who can engage targets on the main road, up on the hill, or even behind him, as well as the enemy commander, a sniper who again has the ability to shoot from two different windows, and one last guy watching from this balcony. I also have a pair of men watching the pier in case of an amphibious attack, but if blue 4 units are detected in the town itself, these two guys will come running to support the defense. Using triggers that are connected to waypoints like this is an incredibly easy way to set up ambushes or reinforcements with no scripting knowledge required. My final tip is, don't leave anyone out. We already get left out in real life, so let's not extend it to the game too. Fact is, it's very difficult to design a combined arms mission where everybody gets to have fun. Often armored vehicles or air units will kill everything on the map, leaving nothing behind for the infantry to deal with. While this might be realistic, it definitely isn't fun, so it's a problem that has to be dealt with. I figure there's two methods to fix the issue. One is to downgrade the assets friendly forces have access to. Instead of giving them a Bradley, give them a crappy MRAP with a 50 cal. Instead of giving them a fighter jet, make them use a Huey. The second method is to upgrade the enemy, give them launchers and static weapons that can deal with vehicular threats from land and air. And perhaps add some enemy air assets for your pilots to dogfight to keep them too distracted to level the entire map. Just make sure everybody is engaged and having a good time, and the mission will be awesome. Alright, that's all the tips I have for you today. I hope you found this video very useful. Whether you're an aspiring mission maker or a veteran at this stuff, I'm sure you learned something new from this video. But until next time, toodles!